Are you concerned about all this corruption being misgendered as conspiracies? Well, don't you worry. Sit back, relax, and join in the conversation as we talk with today's guest. Welcome to another LSB Film Productions podcast with your host, Chris Brooks. Hello and welcome to the channel. It's me, Chris Brooks, and welcome to another one of my podcasts. In this podcast, I am talking with I am talking of Samsung SM. No, I'm joking. I am talking with June Moore, and June, like me, is going through the process of reclaiming her standing with the DVLA. So there's a lot of twists and turns in this story. So without further ado, welcome to the channel. Thank you very much, for, uh, Chris, for inviting me. And You're more than welcome. Uh, sorry about you. You've been very patient with um, all the hassles we've had. <laughs> getting oh, that's all right. That's okay. <laughs> I'm used to them. Okay, so yeah, let's let's hear from the beginning then. What how what made you what started this journey? Okay, um, I realised um, back in 2021 that um, I was duped into having a driver's license in the first place because. I became aware that there's a difference between a traveller and a driver, a driver being using the roads for commercial purposes, right. and that I'm only using my car for getting to A to B. I'm not using it on the road for any other reason. And so I was duped into believing that I needed a, a driver's licence. So I, um, when I was contacted by the DVLA to renew my driver's licence, Bearing in mind my very first driving license I had many, many years back when I was 17, in fact, and I was led to believe that it was to last till the age of 70. Um, so I questioned um, why I needed to renew my driver's license in the first place and whether I needed one at all, being a, a traveller and not a driver. Well, of course, I was ignored by the DVLA. In fact, I actually wrote to Julie Leonard, the CEO, um, and that was ignored. And then I was constantly harassed for some months. Um, and in fact, um, was um, harassed by um, at least two um, third party interlopers. Um, and I wrote to them as well, explaining I don't need. Um, Who were the interlopers? Third party interlopers being um, debt collectors. Right, bailiffs. Bailiffs. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, I was ignored by them. Then I got um, contacted by a PC Barton of the West Mercia Police. That was in July 2022, saying, according to our database, your vehicle is not insured. So I wrote him um, a rather long letter explaining why I do not believe I need to be insured, although it's prudent to be insured, um, but that it is not um, the law or a, a legal requirement mm. as a traveller, as is MOT and, and um, tax. Um, I did not get a response from him, I, although I, I requested one. Then on 14th of September 2022, which is a few months after uh, getting this uh, communication from PC Barton. I was actually stopped on the roadside at 10.30 at night um, by a sergeant and a, a PC officer. Um, I explained to them um, why I don't feel I need a, a driver's license. I'm a traveller. And um, they, I, I gave uh, Sergeant Bennett a copy um, of the letter I had sent to PC Barton, which was unrebutted or no, no communication was um, forthcoming from him. Um, all the questions that they were asking me, I then said, I do not wish to create joinder and refused to answer any of their questions. Uh, one thing I did ask uh, was, are they acting under their oath? And PC, uh, PC Greg, who was, um, the guy that stopped stopped me, he just laughed and said, oh, um, is this something to do with the common law thing? Well, um, there's no such thing as common law. Really? He said that? 
that he told me that, yeah. And unfortunately, I couldn't get my camcorder working at the time. And what was his um, position? So well, he wasn't a constable. He was a, just a police a officer. PC. Wow. PC, Greg. Police constable, I'm assuming that that's what it stands for. But that's exactly what he said, and he laughed at me. And I think, if I remember rightly, he, he actually said, oh, we get this all the time. Really? Which was not rather an interesting, interesting thing to say, I thought. But so stupidly, I did get out the car because um, they had called a, a tow truck. And so I'm stood at the side of the road, and I asked, am I under arrest or can I leave? And uh, Sergeant Bennett said, uh, we just need to find out details of who you are because I refused to answer any of the questions. So they were on the DVLA database, obviously, at that time. And um, so my car was towed and I was allowed to leave. Um, so then I went to the police station seven days later to retrieve my car and the lady at the desk conveyance. asked me for a driver's license. Sorry. Use the word conveyance as opposed to car. Yes. <laughs> yes. That, that's, because if not, that's going, this is the trouble. People so know, easily so slip back into their, so, yeah, and people slip straight back into their jurisdiction just by exactly. the words. A absolutely. I think we need to make it very clear which Oxford, which dictionary we're using, which is the Oxford. Yeah. English dictionary in future so anyway she asked me for a driver's license and I said no I don't have one because I didn't believe having not renewed it that I did have one so she said well I can't do anything um, until you uh, produce a driver's license and I can't fax details over to the pound you're going to have to get your driver's license and I then gave her a copy of my UCC1 filing and also um, schedule A of my private trust. And she said, I have no idea what I'm looking at. And I said to her, no, but your legal team will. So she went off and she made a, a quick phone call. She came back to me and she said, you can go and collect your car. Bearing in mind, no driver's license, no tax, no MOT, no insurance. But what she did say is, I have faxed your driver's license to the pound, which initially she said she couldn't do. So I did uh, go to the pound and they would not allow me to drive it off their forecourt without proof of insurance. So I got them to um, tow it back to my property. So then I get... Um, uh, about a month later, I get uh, a fixed penalty um, from the West Mercia, a, a West Mercia caseworker, and I. And that's in relation to you being stopped that night. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I wrote to them saying, um, I don't believe that I have committed any offence. And that, um, please, I need to know who I'm speaking to because this hasn't been signed by anybody and I can't respond to a building. Um, that was ignored. And then I get a summons to court. So I thanked them for their invitation, but I declined it. And again, asked, I need know who I'm speaking to, man or woman. Um, that was ignored. Then um, they then sent me a single justice procedural notice pack, which is about six pages long and full of boxes. Oh, well, and we know what boxes mean, don't we? Absolutely. So my response to them was, Please provide the name of the magistrate dealing with this case in the, chorus, the next correspondence. As I have previously stated, I cannot correspond with a building. Thank you for whoever you are, for your invitation to your Office of Administration. However, I choose to decline your offer as apart from the inconvenience to me, which may incur a loss of wages and the unnecessary cost to the taxpayer, I could consider this case can be dealt with easily by postal communication due in part 
to the communication I have submitted on two occasions now. Furthermore, it is my underst understanding accord that according to Halsbury's law, all courts have no lawful authority and a summons to court is in breach of the Fraud Act 2006. As stated in your letter, the purpose of the hearing is for clarification of my plea. I wish to make it clear that I am not guilty to the alleged offences as I was travelling and not driving. It is up to the magistrate dealing with this case to provide evidence to the contrary. And I made it clear what documentation I had forwarded, which is at that point then, a copy of my affidavit of status, Schedule A of my private trust and UCC1. Um, and th these, uh, a copy of my affidavit, affidavit of status um, was sent to Judge Judy Donahue at The Hague, Ian Burnett at the Royal Courts of Justice, Pepper Mills, Chief Constable at West Mercia Police, Julie Leonard, CEO of the DVLA, and none have rebutted um, my affidavit of status. So... Um, do you write the affidavit or did you have somebody on your behalf do it or...? Um, I do believe advice? at the time I was on, I was on a tele telegram group where um, this affidavit of state, status was then available to all of us. And it was up to us to add whatever we wanted to it. Okay, so a template. Um, so it was basically a template, yes. And so that was used. Um, my court case has now been adjourned for the seventh time. Really? And each time I was constantly writing back to them saying, thank you once again for your invitation. I, I decline. And I'm still asking for a man or a woman to correspond with. What you and need to do is you need to, I know, I know we said it's an invitation, but actually they're all deemed as complaints. So it's thank you for your complaint. Ah, uh, right. But no, even, even, a, even a council tax bill is deemed as a complaint. Right. Okay. Well, that's something I'll bear in mind. <laughs> For the future anyway um bottom line is i decided um to get the crown prosecutor involved that's shajit shaja javid mm -hmm. um at the west midlands magistrates court department and i um told him that um as i've not been um given anybody's name to deal with that i am taking him personally responsible for this case Right. Um, so, and I sent him copies of all the correspondence that had been happening, which has at this point been going on for over a year. So, to this so, day, you've paid no fines, no, and you've and you've attended no court. No. Okay, that's no. good. So, um, the response from um, Shasha Javid was that my documents were not legally standing. So I then wrote back to him um, exactly what I did write back. We, we, uh, we write in response to your correspondence dated the 9th of October 2023, in which you state that the documentation forwarded in, de in defence of this case has no legal standing. To facilitate clarity, we re represent the following questions here and after written as points A, B and C, which we'd like a response to. We use the English Oxford Dictionary definitions and manual styles to ensure mutual understanding we kind of request an explanation regarding the specific style and dictionary definitions being employed in your future communications with the above considerations in mind we respectfully seek an explanation regarding the documentation forwarded and specifically the affidavit affidavit of status which you mr shahar javid indicates is not considered legally standing this document remains unrebutted by the King's Bench London, International Courts of Justice, Netherlands, Chief Constable at Hindley Hall, Worcester, DVLA Swansea, and others, in accordance with established legal principles. Is it not the case that unrebutted documentation is commonly understood to stand as truth and fact? A clear understanding of this would be appreciated. Is it not the case that under the Clearfield Doctrine, 
the Crown Prosecution Service is a corporation as it is listed on Dun and Bradstreet's database. And the Dun's number was given and therefore comes under contract law. We wish for this to be clearly established in order for us to proceed with our future communications. Furthermore, we notice that your response, dated 9th of October 2023, was not signed. We would like to inquire if this omission is of a signature or seal constitutes a contravention of the Companies House Act 2006, Section 44. Clarification on this matter would be appreciated. So then I get another date of hearing. <laughs> Before we just go into that quickly, can I just ask yes. you how you sign off your... I autograph them. Right, okay. So capital VC, dot, dot, dot. Um, your name all in lowercase, a living yes. woman. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Yes. Okay, because a lot of people don't do that. And that's yes, part of the problem. I, yes, I do. Yeah, um, okay. So it's, 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 um, yeah, comma, uh, not comma, it's, um, yeah, I'm do, I can't remember what they call it now. Compound. Mm. Is it compound format? Uh, I believe so. It's compound format. That's right. Um, and all these letters I was sending to Shahar Javid, I was actually also um, sending a copy to Anthony Bannon, the chief constable at the West Mercia Police, mm -hmm. to inform him uh, of what's going on and also to let him know that I do not wish to be... Um, uh, I do not wish to be um, hassled, basically, while this is, is going on. Um, then my final letter, because I'd not heard anything from Shahar Javid, my final letter to him. We are writing to once again express our urgent need for a response to our letter dated 23rd of October 23. Despite the considerable amount of time that has elapsed since our initial communication, we have yet to receive any acknowledgement or reply from your office. It is perplexing to us why a response has not been forthcoming, especially given the extensive period since our inquiry. As you are still registered on the Law Society database as the Crown Prose Prosecuting Solicitor at the Crown Prosecution Service, West Midlands, Colmore Gate, Birmingham, blah, blah, blah. We believe it is your professional duty to provide a timely response. Failure to do so may be interpreted as a breach of professional conduct and could potentially be considered as misconduct. We urge you to promptly address the questions and concerns outlined in our previous letter. Clarity on these matters is essential to the proper pro progression of the legal proceedings and is crucial for upholding the principles of fairness and transpar transparency in the justice system. We require a response from you before the 10th of March 2024 in a timely manner in order for us to respond to Redditch, Redditch Magistrates Court, which is due on the 25th of March 2024. And uh, I recently, I didn't receive anything back from Shahar Javid, but I did get a letter from the West Mercia Police no actual date on this letter and it's not signed. I'm writing to acknowledge receipt of your letter dated the 26th of February 2024, which you have cc'd to the Chief Constable of West Mercia Police. I note your previous correspondence, which, which I have now read. I have inve investigated the matter and as you say, this matter has been adjourned many times. This is because you have not attended the court hearings. The next hearing is listed for the 25th of March 2024 and any questions you have are not able to be addressed ahead of this hearing, which you are required to attend. I am not able to provide any further information and will not therefore respond to any more communication you send to the Chief Constable. And that's my final um, they, communication. They're, they're just today. bluffing and stalling for time. Absolutely. Because people can, if, you know, if you didn't go down the routes that you've gone down writing to them very professionally, I might add, then they, then they would do, they could cast judgment without you there in your absence because that, that that's done. So we know that they're bluffing. We know that they're stalling for time. So well done yeah, on that I, front. I'm not sure where to go from here really, because um, do I actually 
I, I, first and foremost, I, I can't attend a court that's not legitimate. So, one hundred percent. So, where to go from here? Yet, I don't know, um, because this was this last correspondence was actually only a couple of days ago. So, um, I'm I'm trying to decide what really to do next. But I do. I'm aware of the fact that um, surely, if this was all legal and up front, wouldn't the police be knocking on my door to arrest me by now? I would have assumed so. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It all comes down to the twelve bar gills, isn't it? And like you say, you've rebutted, and so the twelve they presumptions of law. Yeah, and... So they can't really. There's nowhere for them to go, and that's what I'm doing. You know, with the DVLA. I've just sent off today um, uh, an affidavit to the bank because ah, okay. everything goes through the bank, doesn't it? If you get a fine, it comes out of your bank. And even like when they've sent the bailiffs, the third party, they've broken GDPR rules. Absolutely. So that in itself, you could claim five grand per breach. You know? Wow. Right. So there's many options for you to go down. I am in the process of trouble because I've had... So many people trying to say, oh, I really like your affidavits that you've sent to the DVLA. I mean, I don't know whether you've watched any of my videos regarding the DVLA. I, I watched the last one. Yeah, it yeah. did. A lot of it went over my head, to be honest with you, Chris, but I was very aware of some of the things I was picking up in what you'd sent, and I, I was very impressed. Thank you. How did so, you get out of that? <laughs> well, this, well, that's it. It's, how, it's about tying them up in knots. It's about removing their jurisdiction right from the get-go so there is no comeback absolutely yes and i think my affidavit of status does actually remove me from maritime jurisdiction it makes it very clear where i stand that's good no that's but really it's good all being, um, even though it's not been rebutted it's been ignored mm. so i have so to I say know, you're, you're a very brave lady because well, i know thank you Many people but, would have given up after the first summons. They go, oh, and then the fear would take over. So I'm, I'm glad got, you haven't. I've got to be honest with you. Initially, it was frightening. But the more I went down the rabbit holes that we do go down, the more I realised how um, how devious they they are working. And, um, and it's all a scam. And the yes, more you start absolutely. to realise the scams that are going on, the more you're willing to stand up and, and you do lose the fear eventually. No, I have good. no fear of bailiffs now. I've had to deal with seven or eight over the past three years and um, they've all gone away because they know they can't frighten me. I've had my car clamped on my private driveway. Um, this was actually over, not to do with the DVLA, this was um, to do with council tax, <laughs> actually. Um, okay, so you're doing the council tax as well. I'm doing everything, gas, electric, water, council tax, Have you written? Have you written to the land registry? I haven't written to the land registry. Right, well, um, the, the thing is, with the council tax, and this is such a big thing, and this is why people get the bailiffs, and that's why you do the land registry first, because you could have paid off your mortgage, mm -hmm. but the land Just registry, and unless you correct their errors, they're right. in control. Of, they believe they're in control of your land. Well, I do believe I did. I'm aware of the fact that um, uh, is the land registry. You have to register. Is it an N98 or something like that? I can't remember what the document I can't name is. The top but of my head. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's an N something, and I think it might be the N98 off the top of my head, which is not cheap. It's a couple of hundred pounds. Um, and from my understanding, the reason why I created a private trust, I've actually got somebody to do, a lawyer who's not part of the bar, to do my yeah. private trust so that they can't put a lien on my property. Okay, well, that's good. That's so as good. far as I know, it's... It's because it's it's on, in a private trust. They can't touch it, from my understanding. Um, and I haven't heard from the council tax either. I didn't refuse to pay them. Just ask for proof of obligation. Obligation to pay, and that I'm willing to pay if they can provide that obligation that that I have to pay. And they so were. Are, are you in your own property then? It's not a council property. It's a no. I'm. In my own property. 
Okay. And what do your family think? Oh my God, they think I'm nuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is it, isn't it? And that's the that's the other thing that a lot of people that puts a lot of people off. It's not Absolutely. necessarily what the establishment thing, it's what your friends and family think. Absolutely, yes. And um unfortunately my youngest son um passed away in November. I'm really sorry to hear that. Thank you. Um he was starting to come around. My boys um have had to deal with the bailiffs at the door, and I've even had one stand in my hallway one morning at 7.30 in the morning. Um, he didn't even ask who I was. I came I down the stairs in my dressing room. Unfortunately, I did have the door was unlocked. But he still opened um, the door and let himself in. So he let himself in, which I un- understand they're entitled to do. Um, I learned that lesson the hard way. Um, so he did start walking around the property, writing down items for, you know, to be seized. And at that point, I actually, not only did he not ask me who I was, I asked him, where's his warrant? He ignored me. So I can't believe that, that they just walked in. Absolutely. So I, uh, he was ignoring everything I was saying. I was telling him to get out. In fact, I rang the police and I said, uh, I have a trespasser in my house. I need you to come and attend. And they said, who is he and where's, what's his name? Where's he from? Where's he say he's from? And I told them it was from Duke's bailiffs. And they said he's got every right to be there and put the phone down. See, the police should be remaining impartial impartial there because it's a civil. It's a civil matter. um, But the fact that I said, well, he's a trespasser. He's got no right to be in my home as a trespasser. I haven't invited him in. And they wouldn't come out to 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 help me. Um, so I actually then said to him, um, actually, all my assets are in a private trust. That did stop him in his tracks. And he said, um, can you give me proof? And I said, well, all the paperwork's actually in the post at the moment as we speak, which was true. Um, so he did leave. Well, that's good. So, yeah, I was I managed to to, to get rid of him that way. Um, so yes, um, I, I seem to be the guinea pig that the, um, uh, the stand in the park members that I join, okay, <laughs> yeah. part of the Worcester stand in the park group, oh, well um, done. and they, um, they're kind of watching to see what happens next. Um, it's kind with of me. a very similar situation with me, I suppose, in many respects. I mean, I know people who have stopped paying their council tax for like over a year, but they again haven't gone down the land registry, so they've been said. I think it was like Anglian Water as well. They've they've put a lien on the house, so if they sell the house, then they They'll will take any that. monies from that. That's yeah. right. I think it's something like, um, the, well, the last I looked, um, as soon as it goes over five thousand pounds, they will put a lien on your house. Um, I believe. Um, I'm assuming that my that I'm safe with that. My property and my assets are safe because of the private trust, but I will look into the land registry side of things again and Definitely. be willing to, you know, with all the money I have managed to save that's been. <laughs> well, no, uh, that's, that's, that's what it's I've about. Gone. And that's, that's the thing. I mean, then like I, I said, to do. Yeah. yeah, like I'm, I've had so many people asking me for help that I'm now actually setting up uh, and this hasn't been aired yet, but I'm right. setting up a, a, like a Patreon account. So all, the affidavits and things will be available for people to alter. Sure. They'll, it'll be done like a word document. So the yeah. banking, the land registry, the DVLA, the Perfect. attorney general, the police, Excellent. the NHS. I think yeah. there's about 10 organizations that I'm actually going to do. Obviously the council tax. And so like yeah. you, I'm, I'm a, a guinea pig as well. Um, but it's, <laughs> We need guinea pigs. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, on principle, I'm doing this more than anything because of, you know, people are being, you know, duped left, right and centre. And it's just, you know, trying to wake them up. As soon as, if we had enough numbers of people awake to this, I'm sure they'd be absolutely livid if they were to discover, you know. The the, the whole system would come crashing down. It would, and we only need the numbers because 
you know, it, it's unbelievable what's going on, you know. And, you know, I, I, I've been um, watching a lot of um, Richard Vobes. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Richard Vobes. Oh, yes, he's, 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 I, we're friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, he's um, just recently um, interviewed um, an ex-cop um, that's become a whistleblower to all the scams that are going on with the corporations that go on changing their names. Is that Gary? You know? Gary that's somebody? Right. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. right, Gary somebody, yeah. Um, but the one that I found really interesting also was um, the one he did about two months ago, which I'm going to look into more, and it, it is to do with the DVLA. Um, it was um, Sovereign Pete. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no, no, you know. Are you familiar could, with Sovereign it could, Pete? It could, yeah. <sighs> He's another one who talks about things, but he misses out so much details of what could actually help you with, like, the land registry, for example. Oh, okay. Sort the land registry out, and then you wouldn't have the issues that you get with the council tax. Because when you stop paying your council tax, the council then go to the land registry, who then right. go and arrange the court summons. Well, if you've already corrected the, the errors with the land registry, the council right. haven't got anywhere to go. Right. And so there's, you know, there's just things, I don't know, there's things, that, uh, it might just be my personal opinion, um, but there's things that a lot of these people who talk about it, there's a lot of information that they don't divulge. And it right. seems to be that kind of information, you know, the lack of talking about that information is why people then get caught up in the bailiffs and the court summons, because there's, there's vital information that's not being said right okay which is why i think it's important for everybody it, it's all well and good to be providing templates and i have done that for you know there's actually um a, a new telegram group that's just started up um it's called the dvla something on telegram and i have actually given them um the ones that have asked a copy of my affidavit of status and i've told them use my you know just change the details that you need to change, that it's for free. It was given to me for free. Please use it. Um, and But the problem is a lot of people that use templates don't actually understand. So when the, there's a comeback with the bailiffs or whoever, they don't know where to go, where how to stand up for themselves. So I don't really think templates are very useful if well, they don't is, actually understand. This is, this is why... With, with what I'm setting up now, it is a, a subscription base, so it's like a, a minimal amount a month. But right. you will get the templates, you will get the letters, my responses that I've had from them, so you can know roughly what the responses that you're going to get, and then you will get the responses back from that. Do you know what I mean? So you're getting every everything that I've documented in chronological chronological order. You will yeah. get. And you can edit it to yourself. So, right. The, okay. The other, thing about this, the other thing about the Patreon thing is that we do want to educate people on what the words mean, why you don't use certain words, because that's going to trip you straight back into their world of fiction. And so, it's a, it's not just about the templates. It's about actually educating them what they mean, how you pen your own affidavit, demurra. Because that's the thing that I've seen a lot of affidavits that people have done, but my ones tie them up in knots. Right. I'm quite happy to send you a copy of mine. Um, yeah, please, by all means. Yeah, yeah. I'd, love to, I'd love to see it. Absolutely. Um, so, um, so at the moment, we're kind of in the same boat, really. Um, regarding the DVLA and but the one thing that I I um I found interesting um that Sovereign Pete was talking about was when cars are first manufactured they have a manifest that's supposed to come to the person that that's bought the car and what's happening is it's going straight to the DVLA and you're getting a version of it mm. which I believe is the V5 yeah. it's a version of the manifest Manifest. Well, that, that's why your, so yours somebody, comes back as a registered keeper, not registered owner. Exactly, absolutely. So his um, suggestion was to contact the DVLA asking for the actual original manifest that, it, it, in fact, it belongs to you as the 
the the uh, the owner having bought the, the car, um, of course, chances are they're going to say they can't find it. But then you can say, well, OK, um, it's considered to be lost in transit. Therefore, um, I, I claim it as, as mine, even though it's lost. And, and, and it's the DVLAs that's lost it. So there is, you know, I, I need to go back into that uh, YouTube and actually um, write down exactly what he, he, he suggested to do. And I will have a go at doing that as well um Excuse. in the future but with regards to i mean they seem to be breaking their own rules i mean g going back to um the, the problem with um using templates surely if everything was up a board um was, was on a level everybody would be treated equally with regards to how they're being treated well i'm seeing people are being treated in all sorts of different ways which is why the templates don't work because some people are being harassed and you know being even cut off in the streets with their gas and electric and um you know uh, there doesn't seem to be one avenue that they take which in itself lot, I surely... think a lot of it does depend on how well those affidavits are written right because they'll be able to say, ah, oh, no, that, that, that's not, no, we've got them here, we've got them there. Oh, no, 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 they it's used that, no. And I, I honestly, I think it's, it's if the affidavit demurrer, whoever's written it, if it's good and it's watertight, there's no recourse. I okay, well, all... I did actually, oh. I did actually send mine, a copy of mine to um, uh, my lawyer for him to look over. And he, has, he said, actually, it's one of the best he'd seen. Mm -hmm. Well, it so, sounds good, which is why you still haven't had any fines and you're and you haven't been arrested. So it must be working. But a lot of other people, that's not the case. Right. Okay. Okay. So, well, if if that is the case, you see, a lot of people have said to me, "Well, what what documentation was it that actually worked?" Well, at the time um, that uh, my car was taken off me, I didn't have an affidavit of status. So, as far as I'm aware. It was the UCC one and the Schedule A of my private trust, um, and I don't know which one of those because I've now since found out that actually the UCC one doesn't apply to the UK. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure. I think that's a grey area because surely, because even though it's held on a, a US database, it is to do with the financial system that the UK. The, the UK are the, the heart of the financial system oh, yeah. of everywhere. America is run by London. Run by the the the, 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 uh, the, the square mile. Yeah. yeah. So it's, surely it does affect even a bit. Even the bench, when they refer to the bench in court, bench is Latin mm -hmm. for um, bank. Yes, it, that's it's right. All, yeah. It's all about money. Exactly, which is why I won't ever go to a solicitor to do with the bar. Um, exactly. Because they won't be on your side. That's what makes me laugh when people say, "Oh, I don't know if you've seen the the video I done with Danny, the farmer who had his land taken." That oh, contact the black barrister; he'll help you. Black oh, barrister. Goodness. I'm like, no, he won't. He he just no. won't. No, absolutely not. No, um, we cannot trust anybody who's to do with the bar. Um, so. So that's that's basically in a nutshell <laughs> my situation at. at the moment. Yeah. Well, I yeah. really appreciate you um sharing your your story with me and with us on the channel. Um, I think you've really probably given a lot of people food for thought. And well, I hope that it gives them an opportunity to look into it themselves. Exactly. You know, it's hard work, and it is a bit scary at first. You know, yeah. I'm a single mum. On my own, I'm five foot nothing. <laughs> so if I can do it, hopefully it'll it. give people the, you know, the gump to go ahead and, and at least look into it. Because exactly. when they start to uncover what's going on, you know, it will give them the... Um, and how deep it goes. And how deep it goes, absolutely. Mm, yeah. No, absolutely. Well, listen, I've really enjoyed speaking with you. I think you. you've, you're an inspiration. And thank I you. hope thank a lot of people, thank you. And I hope a lot of people get off their asses and they start to follow suit. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because only think, then will we win. Absolutely. And I think take you, they need to take the fear away of when they realise bailiffs have no jurisdiction over you. No, they're third party interlopers. Um, they shouldn't have had your details in the first place. That was a breach of, as you say, GDPR. Um, so they're constantly breaking all the rules that they, they set up in the first place. Yeah. So I think people need to be aware of it. Yeah. No, absolutely. Well, listen, thank you very much. It's been great. I'll end great. the recording and then I'll have a quick word of you after once I've pressed stop. Okay. Thank you, Chris. So, but for now, thank you everyone who's been watching and listening. I hope you found this informative and inspiring. And until I speak to you again, it's goodbye from me. Thank you, Chris.